I mean, I've been burned up, blowed up, been rolled over on a fire truck, falling down an elevator shaft. I've used up five of my nine lives. So if the cycle works right, I'll be retired before it comes back around to get hurt again. <laughs> Welcome to Rescue Squad 1, serving the nation's capital since 1925. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Joe Rainwater. I'm assigned to Rescue Squad 1 at Engine 2. I've got 29 years in the department. The, the job with the squads is, is so multitasking because not only do we run the regular car accident, we're also involved in High Angle Rescue, which is a part of our entity. Our confined space, building collapse, trench collapse, hazardous material calls, and, and being here in the city where things are happening all the time in the nation's capital, I mean, we run a lot of hazmat stuff. The squad responds to a morning call. A man is trapped in an elevator. Unable to restart the elevator, the doors are mainly opened and the man exit below unharmed. Next door is two floors down, Dave. Yeah, he's out. I didn't want to know we can get out of there. Probably outside, it's afraid of it. Must be. It looks like a hole. Yeah. Yeah. That's this. The repairman is off on top of the car, okay? Thanks, my guy. Thank you. Lieutenant Rainwater stops by the maintenance department for some much needed parts.
Yeah. So I'm a shift supervisor. I've got five guys that work underneath of me. When we're running fire calls, basically my squad wagon driver, he stays outside, he takes care of utilities, cutting bars off windows, things like that, making escape routes for us. Um, we're split up with two teams. I take one guy with me and then two other guys. Uh, myself and one guy will go to the fire floor and then we'll send two guys above the fire. It's all down to teamwork, you know, and everybody has a specific job to do. It's, it's a lot easier having five guys trying to do it and put things together than just one guy calling the shots and, and, and somebody else can see something better. And, you know, so that, that works really well for us. Uh, my name is Bill Rim. I uh, originally became a firefighter because a buddy of mine, while we were in the Army station over in Virginia, were bored. And he had been a volunteer firefighter in, uh, outside of Chicago. So one day he said, uh, let's go join the volunteer fire department. And I found out that I just enjoyed doing it. I was good at it. And it turned out to be a hell of an adrenaline rush. Squad One gets a call. A smoke alarm has sounded at a historical building. wasn't, I think, until I got to Engine 10 that the, the more memorable experiences started happening. And when I came here, is experience is so outlandish that uh, things you'd never see, you know, never thought you'd see in your life. And two summers ago, we received a call on early Saturday morning to go to GW Hospital and assist surgeons. That's all they asked us to do. No explanations, no nothing. They brought us into the emergency room, into one of the private rooms, and there was a gentleman in there with 
the sheet covering his body and he, as soon as we walked in, he actually pulled it up over his face so we couldn't see his face. And the nurse came over and said, uh, can you do anything for this? And she lifted the sheet up and for some unknown, godforsaken reason, this gentleman had taken a five pound plate they use for weightlifting and pushed one of his testicles through the hole. And because of that, it swole up probably the size of my fist, maybe almost double that size. And we spent two and a half hours cutting a metal plate off of a gentleman's testicle. Probably the one of the most outlandish things I've ever seen in this job. And this one you think you've seen everything, someone does something even more outrageous. A fire has broken out in a Chinatown restaurant. The battalion is on scene. The smoke quickly spread up to the neighboring residence and business on the second floor. An apparent grease fire in the kitchen may have possibly started this fire. Only an arson investigation will prove the cause. Yeah. Hey, look at this joint, man. How do you? Sure, 
As in this case, some businesses packed immigrants into one apartment reconstructed into very small rooms, increasing the chances of fire fatalities. Fortunately, the battalion's quick response has prevented what could have been a deadly tragedy. Surprised somebody didn't die. Well, had, it, had this been well, three stories all the way back, instead of one story back there, you probably would have. Jeff Je Remar said that guy was asleep up here, Phil, right? You block up all the, all the rear walls, all the, all the rear windows on the other side are all blocked up. Which would be a, a good exit point, well, obviously. It would be, 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 be a good place to, to get a rescue, but I mean, it's kind of hard to get up on, on a ladder with a sledgehammer to open those up. The night is still young. Reports of smoke in a nearby high-rise puts a squad back into action. Thank <laughs> you.